This is my character. His name is called Flinty. He is a uh, level 1 cypher. I uh, made him look like a viking. Blood viking. <laughs> he has an axe and a sword. I only see that now. Uh, so let's go with this one and start the adventure. The Gilded Veil. Caravan Master Odema. The Caravan Master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red moustache and sagging jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Okay. Who am I? This is. Ah, oh, this is me. That one looks awesome. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you are planning a stroll through those ruins up there. He nods toward a looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area is crawling with hut dwelling types who would be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Fair enough. Tonight everybody stays put and in the morning we'll get the path clear. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. What do you, what do you want? Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle around here, carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. In which case you'll be dead in a day. That sounds awesome. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a spring berry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. So he's telling me to find a berry. Um, we'll look for that. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker. But see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. I'm the sick one. Ah, I remember from the intro. He looks over his shoulder at his assistant, a lanky, intense man named Sparfell, who carries an old sun bleached bow. He nods in my direction. Sparfell nods and slides a worn bow over his shoulder. Now, where would I find these berries? Yeah, I wonder that. Uh, what are those ruins? It is dangerous out here. Um, I want to know about the berries. I'm feeling sick, so that's my first priority. They grow on a bush that's common around here. Kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. Okay, um, so what are those ruins? Nothing you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Fair enough. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. He adds with a wink. Uh, what does this say? Your character, attributes, skills, class, race, culture, sex. May all open up options for you in dialogue. These options are not necessarily superior to the other responses, but give you a wider variety of choices to select from. The manner in which someone responds to your choices depends on their individual personality and attitude. Ooh, this dialogue system will be intricate. Um, thank you. So I. Oh, there are additional answers. Um, uh, yeah, what are these huge rocks coming up out of the ground? They don't got Audra where you come from? Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. Uh, I don't. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. The soul butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. Um... Is it dangerous out here? 
Not if you hurry about your business. Okay. And not if the weather holds up. There's concern in this tone, but he does not elaborate. Hmm, he's hiding something. <laughs> yeah, what kind of weather do they get out here? This time of year, rain mostly, and wind. But there's a different kind of wind out here time to time. Locals call it a beowick. Born out of the ether, the spirit's path. Never seen it myself, never care to. Hmm. Mysterious. And who did build the ruins? Got different names for them. Settlers called them Nguithans. Nobody that liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins, tell you that much. And that's... So far as the dialogue options go, guess I'll leave. I'll go see about those berries then. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot. Not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. He scans over to the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy, armor-clad woman who has spent the journey's night sleeping on uneven ground without blanket or pillow. That seems like a good choice for a bodyguard. So, Kalisha. Kalisha! The woman looks up on her own time. Kal Kalisha. Kaliska. Kalisha, I guess. He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. Ooh. A blonde, warrior-like woman. Nice. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. <laughs> he chuckles and shakes his head. He casts a sidelong glance at her. Hmm. Off with you. Hayden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. His small grin recedes beneath his moustache and he is stern once more. So now it begins, I guess. Yes, the dialogue ends. You heard the man. Whoa. Let's get going before you keel over. There's a new quest in Moments Respite. Welcome to the Pillars of Eternity. If this is your first visit to the world of Eora, it is, you may want to watch these windows to become familiar with the tools and interface available to you. Well, I will do that. Oh, the party always consists of your character and up to five additional companions or adventurers. While the caravan is camped outside the Glenfethen ruins, Odima has assigned Kalisha to help you. Kalisha is a fighter, a class that excels at close quarters defense. Use her abilities to com complement your own. Thank you. Any more? Yes, to select a party member, click on their selection circle, their portrait, or press the number button that corresponds to their position in the party, starting with one at the left. To select multiple party members, click and hold anywhere on the screen and drag the marquee over the circles of the party. Okay, um, I will get ahead with that. To move select characters, click anywhere on the screen. All select characters will pass through the corresponding position. Yeah, they got um, positions uh, or how do you call? How do you name it? Lineups? I don't know. Um, formations to uh, position the characters. It's a nice touch. So I should be uh, on the second row, I guess, um, with my roguelike, well, not rogue, but not warrior kind of like character. And multiple party members are selected. The action bar is hidden. Okay. Any more? No, that's it for now. Uh, display here. Let me get familiar with the uh, menus and stuff and interface. So these are the messages. What's this? Oh, some kind of actions. 26 hours have passed. Uh, joined the party, the Gilded Veil. Kalisha has joined the group. And a moment's respite has... Oh yeah, that's the berry uh, thing. Uh, there's my character. Endurance and health. And she has more endurance. And more health. So Kalisha is a lot better than me. Our party consists out of two. Now let me check the menu and save the game while I'm at it. Uh, yes, new save file please. And that's quick save. Now let me check the buttons. Uh, quick save.
F5, okay. Yeah, that works. And yeah, it's all controlled with the mouse. Oh, it's a fast, mag fast mode active, I don't want that. Uh, let me check the menus here. There's attack, seems good enough. Cancel, select all, backspace, that's a good thing. I guess I want to be controlling all formation. Uh, block, triangle, single file, custom, and another custom. Um, I guess I want to do this. Wait, am I at the front here? Uh, let's put our two together. Can I? Oh. Let's do it like this. Leave one space because they have to, to get to know each other. Maybe they're not too close. So this seems like a good choice. Let's pick this one. Uh, can I? Did it change? I don't know. Uh, this is the camp. You have no camping supplies. Oh, I can rest. Uh, what is this? Scouting left alt, right alt. What Stay is quiet. That? Scouting mode is used both for stealth and for finding hidden objects like traps and secret containers. While scouting, your character selection circles will start to fill with yellow when a character is starting to detect them. Once the circle fills yellow, the character is suspicious and will move to investigate while the circle fills red. If the circle becomes fully red, your characters will be discovered. So that's kind of a stealth mode. It's based on his mechanics. I have a high mechanic skill, I guess. So I'll be using that a lot, I guess. Uh, now it's passed. How do I resume? Oh, click it away. Move it toward a character acceleration. How quickly they will detect you. Okay. We'll experiment with that. Thank you. Can it unpause? How do I unpause the game? Ah. I can zoom. Oh. Mm -hmm. Ah. Okay, let me check more menus. Inventory. Um, there are some damage, accuracy. Yeah, primary, secondary. I got two weapons in my hand right now. There's the color of my outfit, which I can change at any time. Uh, not now, though. There are my armors. I only have a padded armor, light armor. Padded armor consists of heavily quilted wool or linen and offers modest protection against crushing attacks. Okay. I can even enchant. Not yet, I guess. Attribute bonuses, proofing quality. I need to have recipes and items, I guess. That's for later. Uh, so a lot of options, rings, and you know what. And uh, there's the weapon set, quick items, I'll be doing that later. Weapon set, I've got a hatchet. Small and swift. Uh, what's my damage? 8 to 13. And my second one, oops, is a dagger. Uh, I can have a second weapon set, good to know. Uh, can I change them? Uh, I can not select quick items yet, I guess. Or maybe these are the right ones. And what is this? Camp supplies. This is currency. I got 100. 100 dollars. Whatever it's called. Gold. And some stash. Now this is my inventory. I wonder. Is this unlimited what I can carry? I don't know. Crafting. Whoa. Food, potions and scrolls. Wow, there's a lot. Well, I guess uh, I'll check that later when I got the items. And uh, the inventories of the, the party members. I can select which items, I guess. She doesn't have anything. Yet. So that's uh, my first character, Flinty. And then Kalisha, let's take a quick look at her. She got a skill armor, she's a medium kind of armor type. She has two weapons, a battle axe and a torch. <laughs> I'll 
try and finding only with flinty uh, I don't know how the battle system works exactly yet but we'll see um, okay so that's my inventory now let's what's this inspect well, maybe later there's my character a pale elf experience there are my attributes yes reputations party reputations elapsed time one day already goes quickly travel time yada yada all stats personal stats even wow um, what are you she's an explorer as well from meadow she's a meadow folk a fighter some nice attributes especially in might survival constant recovery fighting spirit knockdown Seems like good skills to have. I got a soul whip. Causes the cypher's weapons to generate a field of parasitic energy that lashes out at the target. Yeah. Okay, let me check further. To the journal. I got some quests. The hollowing of the deerwood. I guess those are the main quests. A sudden sickness has come over me. The caravan master has urged me to make a remedy before my condition worsens. Yes, that's some spring berries and I can concoct a remedy. Guess I can experiment with the crafting. Hmm, it's the month name, Marsh Prima. And the Gilded Vale is said to be one of the most prosperous villages in the Dirr Wood. Full of opportunities for work and wealth, I was told they're offering land to new settlers. I must journey to the Gilded Vale. Yes, but not before I find this. Sparfell has gone to fetch water. Okay. And there are quests and tasks that I haven't got yet. A journal, there's a biography. Your whole life you've lived through a thrill of discovery and exploration, finding it irresistible. Um, the siren called the far reaching unknown place of the world. Many live their lives perfectly content with the confines of one small town, but you. To you such a fate would have been a death sentence. You fell in travelling with the caravan bound for Guild Vale. So I'll check this when I uh, haven't played for a while. Cyclopedia, oh my. Wow. Uh, yeah. I can do a lot of reading, which I won't do now. Let me just check one, yeah. Whew. Yeah, I'm not going to check all that. Um, and some notes. I can create a note for myself. Wow. Now, interesting thing to have is a map. I'm with the encampment now. And I guess the map is this big. And there's a world map. Ah, nice. Click and drag to navigate Deerford Village. There's a big city over here. And where am I? Twin Elms. Gilded Vale. That's where I am, I guess. Am I? I don't know. But nice. Uh, what is this? A stronghold? You do not own the stronghold yet. Okay. Whoa. And the options. So. I've gone to the menu, now exp let's experiment with the controls. Yes, I can click and select, and they're moving in their formation. Uh, let me check this again. Steady does it. No. There was a button to show the items, I think. Let me take a look at the controls for a sec. Just to get the lay of the land, toggle hot, control H, and highlight interactables. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking for. Yeah, let's try that. Ah, oh, this is nice. Spares me uh, the time to explore and uh, to check everything. Um, Okay, let's uh, save for a moment.
and let's stalk some some folks here. What is it? Adama has to say. Can I? Go on then, before it gets too dark. Most people you encounter in the world are neutral or friendly. You can interact with them by clicking on their selection circle. Many characters will simply greet you and go on their way, but others will have larger conversations to explore. The Merchant Heodan is a conversation that opens a store with equipment for sale. Good work. Uh, so he doesn't have anything go to say. Go on then, yeah. before it gets too dark. Uh, there are more caravanners. Let's talk to the bunch. Meddle with the folk. Caravan life does agree with you, does it? You look as raw as a merchant Heodan. All kinds of beasts in these woods, and then you have the tribes. Uh, but I want to play with yeah. my character. Uh, sure. Does the other one have something to say? Don't mind, Adema. This is as good as a place to camp as any. Okay. And then there is more caravanners. It's best not to wander alone, especially not near the ruins. Uh, what does she have to say? I've traveled with Odema before, he's never led us astray. So they trust him. Who are you? Another caravanner. I suppose you wouldn't know much about Glamfethans. They're mighty protective of places like this. You really you really don't look so good, Odema was right to stop. Mm, I will not talk to him twice. I, I think they have, from what I've gathered now, uh, they have two things to say. Someone. Uh, let's talk to these guys. I see more and more people on the roads these days, looking for safety in towns and cities, it seems. And what do you say? It's best not to wander alone. Uh, they're kind of saying the same. But then in circles, I can zoom. To even more caravanners. Caravan life does agree with you, does it? You look as yeah. And now let's talk to him. Yeah, has already been set, pal. There's Hiodan, the merchant. But before we talk to him, let's talk to this dude. Yep, that's the same. And there are some chests. Zero, guys. I can open this. And there is a potion of minor endurance. Yeah, I'll take it. Oh, there's going to be a lot to learn in this game. So many options and items to use and stuff. But I'll be soldiering forward. I have to learn. Uh, what is in this? Their wooden clothing, light armor. Can I equip that? Oh, that's me naked. Semi naked. Uh, I can only wear it instead of that one. It ain't better, so uh, yeah. Maybe I will sell it right away. Uh, what is this? Can we go closer? And where's my teammate? Let's collect them together. Come on. Yes. I want to go through this as a team. Now what does this mean? These tall glass green pillars appear as if they have sprouted from the earth. The flickering fire sets what? Shadows dancing within. Okay. And uh, there's a note. Anyone need supplies? I've got sundries for sale. Yeah, in a minute. I want to check this. Ooh. Potion of minor. I can select who gets it. Uh, a potion of minor regeneration. I'll take it. And some copper pen. It's currency, okay. So, let me check at the inventory again. Do the items... Can I put items in here? Yes. So I can put anything in the stash. 
until it's full, I guess. Okay. Uh, let me save. And now let's talk to uh, the merchant, I guess. See what he has to say. Yeah. Let me check the map. Yeah, this is the far end, so uh, yeah, I can go that way. Redoron. Hyodan, I mean. Hyodan, you see a man wearing simple but mostly neat clothes. He is transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. When he shakes his head and laughs, he scratches one check with his knuckles. It's covered with uneven stubble, as if he hasn't quite gotten used to shaving on the road. Okay. Say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale, if you'd like to take a look. First, uh, who are you? I'm a trader, originally from the Adir Empire, but I've been trying to establish new business out here. The life on the road has brought some unexpected challenges, to be sure. And I'm sure you've noticed how prickly the locals can be. But we're here to make the most of things, right? Sure. Um, guess this leaves me a choice. Uh, let's let's encourage him uh, with an outlook like that I'm sure you'll do well we'll see I suppose I'm just trying to do right by my family you now have one rank in a disposition reputation these reputations represent how most people perceive your personality throughout the world even seemingly nasty reputations will be favored by some people and benign reputations often bring out the worst in certain people no disposition is inherently good or bad in Pillars of Eternity, but if your main character is a priest or paladin, you must be careful not to misalign their dispositions. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, with what that is favored by their de deity, an order respectfully for the main character. Their dispositions will modify the effects of Holy Radiance. But I'm not a paladin, so um, let's continue. Something else you need? Looks like we're settled for the night. Tell me about the uh, Ader Empire. It's not as big as it used to be, but it's still big. The mainland is a continent northwest of here, but the colonies used to include Rayad Saris and the Deerwood. About 150 years ago, Deerwood won its independence from the Empire. A fact our companions are quick to remind me of. He gives you a lopsided grin and nods at the other scattered caravanners. Hmm. Uh, why don't you move all the way out of here? Because it seemed friendlier than Raid Saris? <laughs> My brothers took over the family mercantile business a few years ago, and there wasn't enough for me to do back home. I moved out to try and expand. He shrugs. Drywood is a former Adire colony, so it seemed like a good place to start, and as much as I admire the Red Saren's work ethic, they've always struck me as a little fanatical. Mm. I don't know, really have an opinion about that. Um, sounds reasonable enough. Out here I'm just taking it one day at a time. Uh, well, let's see what you've got now. Stores allow you to trade and sell your items for copper pieces, CP. Or items in the store's inventory, so I can trade with the items. Merchants buy items from you at a greatly reduced price. If you sell something, you may see it appear in the store's inventory at a much higher cost, of course. So I've got 110 gold. Uh, there's my stash. There's a party. Okay, yeah. Uh, I think I'll sell this because I have no use for it now. Store. Can I sell it? Trade. No, and I cannot haggle, I guess. Thank you. Uh, what do you have? A crossbow? No, I don't want that yet. A great sword, a hunting bow, a pike, a 
quarter staff, a war bow, and a battle axe. Oh, there's a lot of stuff. Wow. Uh, there's some armor, which I can't afford yet. And another potion and a lockpick. Uh, I like to have a lockpick. Let's choose uh, two. They're kind of expensive. Let's choose one lockpick. Uh, I don't want to buy any weapons yet. I don't think I need them yet. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I can... I guess you can buy a weapon here that you like. But let's try it with the, uh, the default settings. See how I like it. So, no, thank you. Uh, armors. Hey. It shows weapons and armor, I guess. What's this? Hmm. Shields. Yeah, let's start with this. I uh, got 147 gold now. We'll see how we'll make it. Make it. Uh, thank you, Heodan. Anything Something else, else to you say? Need? No, I better Looks go. Looks like we're settled for the night. Okay, so I'm, uh, I guess I'm off adventuring. Um, to start with the a moment's respite quest, I guess. Yes, to pick up the berries. Alright, let's do that. 